Ownership is of extreme importance when networking. It is vital to understand how ownership works. Only clients may have ownership of an object, making them the owner. While the server ultimately decides what happens with an object, the server itself never actually owns the object. Only clients may own objects. It's important to remember that when you perform base.isOwner checks, you are performing them from the client, not the server. Ownership allows a player to send server RPCs to the server, which is a common way for a player to talk to the server. Server RPCs are often used to request action by the server. My remote calls video will cover server RPCs in more detail. Generally, ownership represents which player has the power to modify an object, such as your character or an item being held, but the uses are limitless. The player spawner demo script illustrates how to spawn an object for a client, giving them ownership when they join the server. There are also several other ways to receive ownership. Below are some common options. I have a quick demonstration below on how to spawn with ownership. Up above, I have some prefab, which is a game object. This is the game object I'm going to spawn for the player. This is not actually hooked up to anything, it's just for the example. I have a check that if my player is dead, because in this example we're using it as a respawn, and if I am the owner of this object, then I'm going to send a server RPC. By default, only owners of objects can send server RPCs. There are exceptions to get around that though, and that's something else that's covered in my remote calls video. If the player is dead and the owner of the object, then we're going to send the RPC through, and we'll cover that right below here. To spawn an object over the network, you must first instantiate it on the server. Notice that this says server RPC. This is being called on the server and I am instantiating my sum prefab, which I indicated was the player prefab. After you instantiate the game object, you just call base.spawn, passing in the instantiated object. There's also an optional parameter for the owner. Whenever the owner parameter exists, that particular client is giving ownership of the spawned object immediately. In this case, I'm giving ownership to the client which called the RPC. That's all there is to spawning with ownership. I also have another method here called request ownership on click, and this is going to show you how to take ownership of an existing object. This method will perform a rate cast trying to hit any objects on the screen here, and if it finds an object, then it's going to try and take ownership of it. Notice I am exiting the method if not the owner, because in this example only the owner can send server RPCs. Let's assume an object is hit and go down to the server request ownership method right here. This is yet another very simple method and again being a server RPC, remember that it is called on the server. Passed in is the network object that was clicked by the player. And all I'm doing is on the object that was clicked is I'm calling give ownership to the owner of this script. Let's assume this method is being run on player A while knob belongs to player B. We are telling the network object on player B to assign ownership to the client that owns the object the script runs on, which is player A. I realize the distinction between the clicked object and the owner of the object making the call might be a little confusing, so I'm going to show you an example in a scene. In my scene, I have some scene object, which is just a circle here, and you'll notice that I have a show ownership chain script on it. The show ownership change will color the circle whenever ownership is given to the client. Let's take a quick look at that. These are two methods from the network behavior. They are used as callbacks when certain things happen. For more information on callbacks available in the network behavior, check out the network behavior callbacks video. The ones we are using here are on ownership client and on ownership server. On ownership server will be called on the server whenever an owner for that particular object has changed. Likewise, on ownership client does the same except we'll call on the client side. To demonstrate ownership or gaining ownership, we're going to use the on ownership client method. Supplied is the previous owner prior to the change, but we only care about the current owner in this example. In the other script, I said that we're going to take ownership of the object that is clicked, and that is what we are going to demonstrate here. The show ownership change simply demonstrates whenever the client has ownership of this object. Whenever they receive an on ownership change callback, they're going to check if they are the owner, and if so, they will get the sprite renderer of the object and change the color to blue. Let's go ahead and hit play and then start the client and server. You're going to notice that right away the cube is blue. That's because the cube is the player object and it's spawned using the player spawner script. I spoke of that earlier in the video. And if I actually go to my ownership player, which is the player that was spawned, you'll see that it has the ownership script we covered so I can click the other object on the scene. And it has a show ownership change indicating that it does have ownership of this object. And we know this to be true because it changed blue. Likewise, the sum scene object also has the show ownership change script, but it's white because we do not yet have ownership of it. But watch what happens when we click it. 
As expected, we gained ownership of the object. And again, this is because the ownership script called knob.giveOwnership, knob being the object we just clicked, and it's giving ownership to the player that this script runs on.